Fleischer, former White House Press Secretary and Jason Chaffetz, former Utah Congressman, both Fox News contributors. Ari, uh, you know, we hear that Biden is mad at how things turned out, but, you know, maybe to some extent he kind of has a point given how short this Kamala honeymoon was. Well, first, Laura, to hear Joe Biden complain about how bad things are, don't forget, he is the man when Mitt Romney was running for president, he said that Republicans under Mitt Romney want to put African Americans back in chains. So he has no grounds to complain against anybody. Now, as for him getting forced out, you know, yes, he is bitter. He should be bitter. Uh, he has been forced out. He did not quit. He didn't, I mean, he did not step down. He was driven out of the party by Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer, and Barack Obama. But his bitterness doesn't matter because it's all about Kamala Harris. And as for Kamala Harris, yes, she's doing better than Joe Biden was doing a month ago. Any Democrat would be doing better than Joe Biden a month ago. But Kamala Harris is doing worse than Joe Biden was four years ago, and she's doing worse than Hillary Clinton was eight years ago. So this race is still a race that Donald Trump, if he does everything right, can win the race. The fundamentals are still there for Trump to turn this around on Harris. Uh, Biden is increasingly going to be a non-factor. The only issue for Biden is how fast can Kamala distance herself from him. Yeah, Jason, I want to get to that point. We talked about it um, a little bit with J.D. Vance, but this idea that Kamala Harris and her staff goes to Axios and says, okay, this is what we're going to do on Friday. We're going to try to step away from Biden and her old positions because we think they're deeply unpopular. And then we're going to get all wound up around the axle about Biden feeling slighted. The, the story tonight is the Kamala Harris campaign is deeply worried. And one point up in the Fox poll, that's, that's extremely significant, along with that Pew, Pew poll that came out today. It's way too close to be good news for the Democrats, and Trump is up one in Fox. Yeah, the, the problem is that Kamala Harris, she has no principles. She has no driving in, imperative. She is simultaneously trying to wrap herself around the Biden agenda, calling it great success. She was the last person in the room on Afghanistan on all these issues. <laughs> right. We have videotape of her talking about all these issues. And then she has to say, well, no, I'm actually this person and I'm going to fight inflation on day one. And as J.D. Vance just told us, She's been in office for three and a half years. So which one is it? And when you aren't built on principle, you have no driving uh, policy that's behind you, mm -hmm. you get a Hollywood type and it just blows with the wind and, and people see right through it. And Ari, they have a, a presidential candidate in Harris who can't speak to the press. Now they have a vice presidential, uh, her running mate, who also can't give a wide-ranging interview because he's going to get nailed on all his, you know, omissions and misstatements and misrepresentations on stolen valor stuff. So they're left with this m just mushy, you know, vibes campaign. Meanwhile, you got Vance out there who torches the New York Times today off the cuff on inflation because now it's below 3%. Watch this, Ari. When they say that inflation is down, they mean from a baseline where groceries are already 30 percent more expensive than they were when Donald Trump was president. And they're not saying it's coming down. They're just saying it's not going up as fast as it was three years ago. That is not a reputation or a record to brag on. That's a record to be ashamed of. Ari, this idea that they're worried about J.D. Vance. J.D. Vance is a dangerous pick. Meanwhile, Tim Walz literally cannot give an interview. And this guy is just, he's, and for any I mean, he's just on the angle. But the New York Times thing today was amazing. Anybody who saw Senator Vance on CNN over the weekend, taking it to the Democrats, taking it to CNN, taking it to Jonathan Carl on ABC. Senator Vance is an articulate, <laughs> sharp man, and he's a great candidate in this race. And, you know, it does tell you something when the Democratic presidential candidate and vice presidential candidate are incapable of addressing their own base, the media. The mainstream media is their heart and soul, Laura. This is what's propped them up. It's what's given them the free ride. And they are afraid to take the free ride. And when they do, when they do start to ask questions, I will predict to you they're going to all be lollipops and softballs. 
There'll be horse race, silly questions. The press is going to fail to do its job fundamentally. They did in 2020 when they let Biden get away with the basement campaign. And Republicans everywhere have got to realize that. Do not count on the media asking them a single hard question when they do come out of their shell. They will. They'll pick Rachel Maddow or somebody else to give them a softball interview, and they'll say, look, I answered questions. Republicans have got to win this race on their own, doing it the old-fashioned way with advertising and being the tough guys on the block because the Democrats will never hold them to account. I mean, the press will never hold the Democrats to account. No, yeah. No joy in Mudville. I think there's no joy in the K-Hive tonight after these polls. Ari and Jason, great to see you both. All right, coming up just in time for the election. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.